Many seniors take blood pressure medicine every day, but here's a question that rarely gets asked. Which is safer for older adults, amlodipine or metoprolol? Both are common. Both protect the heart. Yet for seniors, the risks can look very different. And the answer may surprise you. Before we continue, a quick reminder. This video is for education only. It is not medical advice. Always talk to your doctor before making any changes to your medication. In the next few minutes, we'll compare these two drugs side by side. You'll see how each one lowers blood pressure, which side effects matter most in seniors, what the latest guidelines recommend, and ultimately, which drug doctors often consider the safer choice. Stay with me, because the safer option isn't always the one people expect. Amlodipine and metoprolol both lower blood pressure, but they work in very different ways. Amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker. It relaxes the artery walls. The vessels open wider, blood flows more easily, and pressure falls. For seniors, this is especially important. The top number, systolic pressure, is often the hardest to control and the one most strongly linked to stroke and heart attack. Studies confirm that amlodipine lowers systolic pressure and improves blood flow in patients with coronary artery disease. That's why many guidelines list it as a first-line option for older adults with uncomplicated hypertension. Here's the practical side. Most adults begin at 5 mg once daily, but for seniors, doctors often start lower, just 2.5 mg. This reduces the chance of dizziness or ankle swelling. If more control is needed, the dose can be raised slowly, usually every one to two weeks, up to a maximum of 10 milligrams. And for patients with reduced liver function, the same low starting dose is recommended with close monitoring. Metoprolol works differently. It is a beta blocker. Instead of widening the arteries, it slows the heart rate and reduces the force of each beat. This lowers blood pressure indirectly by easing the workload on the heart. For seniors with a prior heart attack, with heart failure, or with arrhythmia, this protective effect can be critical. The dosage is also different. In younger adults, the starting point might be 100 mg daily, but in seniors, Doctors usually start much lower, 25 to 50 mg of the succinate form or 50 mg of the tartrate form. The dose is then increased gradually, only as tolerated, up to 400 or 450 mg a day if needed. And here's the critical safety rule. Never stop metoprolol suddenly. Doing so can worsen chest pain or even trigger a heart attack. So when it comes to effectiveness, both drugs are proven. Amlodipine mainly relaxes the arteries. Metoprolol mainly slows the heart. And for seniors, the choice depends not just on lowering blood pressure. Every medicine comes with side effects, and for seniors, these effects are often more noticeable. Let's start with amlodipine. The most common issue is swelling in the ankles and feet, what doctors call peripheral edema. It happens because the vessels relax, pressure builds in the lower body, and fluid seeps into the tissues. This swelling isn't usually a sign of heart or kidney damage, but it can be uncomfortable. Shoes may feel tighter, walking may be tiring, and balance less steady. For frail seniors, that can raise the risk of falling. Other reactions include dizziness when standing, a flushed feeling in the face, or a sense of palpitations. And here's the key. These problems often depend on dose. That's why doctors usually start seniors at just 2.5 milligrams. Raising the dose slowly, every one to two weeks, helps reduce swelling and dizziness. Now metoprolol. Because it acts on the heart, its side effects look different. Fatigue is the one patients notice most often. 
Some describe feeling less energy for daily activities or needing more rest than before. It can also slow the pulse too much, what doctors call bradycardia. When the heart rate drops below 50 or 60 beats per minute, dizziness or even fainting can follow. And for older adults, even one fall can change independence. In people with lung conditions like COPD or asthma, metoprolol may also worsen breathing, even though it is safer than older beta blockers. Here's the practical tip. Starting low, 25 to 50 milligrams a day, makes these side effects less likely. Doctors then adjust upward only if needed and only if the heart rate stays safe. So in summary, amlodipine is more likely to cause swelling and dizziness. Metoprolol is more likely to cause fatigue, bradycardia, and near fainting. Neither is automatically unsafe, but careful dosing, slow adjustments, and early reporting of symptoms keep both medicines safer for seniors. For most seniors, Amlodipine and metoprolol are safe when used under medical supervision, but both carry some rare, more serious risks worth knowing. Amlodipine. Beyond swelling and dizziness, there's a very rare complication doctors call BRASH. It's a cluster of problems. Slow heart rate, kidney strain, electrical blockage, low pressure, and high potassium. Uncommon, yes but it shows how fragile the balance can be in older adults, especially if they take several heart medicines or already have reduced kidney function. Metoprolol. The main concern is bradycardia, or a pulse that drops too low. In seniors, that can mean sudden fainting, weakness, or a dangerous fall. And in those with COPD or asthma, it may worsen breathing if not monitored carefully. That's why doctors reserve it for patients who clearly need its heart-protective benefit. Here's the surprising part. Both drugs can raise fall risk, but in different ways. Amlodipine through swelling and dizziness. Metoprolol through fatigue and a slow pulse. For seniors, even one fall can change everything. From hospitalization to loss of independence. The bottom line, neither medicine should be feared, but both require close monitoring, especially in older adults. Regular checkups, careful dose adjustments, and reporting warning signs early, swelling, faintness, or unusual tiredness, keep treatment safe. That's why doctors always start low and go slow. For seniors, one of the biggest challenges isn't just taking one pill, it's managing many medicines at the same time. Doctors call this polypharmacy, and it changes the safety picture for both amlodipine and metoprolol. Amlodipine is broken down in the liver by an enzyme called CYP3A4. That means other drugs using the same pathway can change how it works. Certain antibiotics, antifungal medicines, even grapefruit juice, can raise amlodipine levels. The result? More dizziness, more swelling. For seniors already taking several prescriptions, this overlap really matters. Metoprolol also brings its own risks. It can interact with other heart drugs, like digoxin or additional blood pressure pills, to slow the heart too much. Sometimes the pulse drops so low that fainting or severe fatigue appear. That's why beta blockers are often flagged as potentially inappropriate for some older adults. Now, doctors do sometimes use amlodipine and metoprolol together. This combination can work, but only with lower starting doses and close monitoring. The goal is to capture the benefits of each drug while keeping the risks under control. Here's the part many seniors don't hear about. Polypharmacy is not unusual, but it requires careful oversight. Even safe medicines can become risky when stacked together. 
That's why regular medication reviews every few months are critical for older adults. And this brings us to the next question. What do major guidelines actually say about using these drugs in seniors? That's where we'll turn next. When doctors choose a blood pressure medicine for seniors, they don't start from scratch. They follow guidance from expert groups, the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, and the European Society of Hypertension. What do the guidelines say? Most agree that blood pressure targets should be individualized. For healthy older adults, aiming below 130 systolic is often recommended. But for frail seniors, or those with several conditions, a less aggressive goal may actually be safer. Amlodipine comes first in many algorithms. As a calcium channel blocker, it's effective, well studied, and usually well tolerated, aside from the swelling risk. That's why it's a common first-line option, especially for seniors with isolated systolic hypertension. Metoprolol has a more selective role. It's not first choice for seniors with plain hypertension, but when there is a clear cardiac reason, a prior heart attack, arrhythmia, or heart failure, Guidelines support its use. In these situations, the benefits often outweigh the risks. Here's the part many people miss. Guidelines don't crown one drug as better. Instead, they stress tailoring treatment. To the blood pressure pattern, the other health problems, and the side effect risk of each senior. In practice, that means anlodipine is often used first. Metoprolol is added when heart-specific protection is needed. Doctors weigh the trade-offs carefully, balancing blood pressure control with overall safety. And this brings us to a very practical question. Between amlodipine and metoprolol, which one is actually prescribed more often for seniors? And why? That's what we'll cover next. In real-world practice, both amlodipine and metoprolol are prescribed, but in seniors, they're not used equally. Amlodipine is usually the first choice for older adults with uncomplicated high blood pressure. It lowers systolic pressure reliably, has strong evidence in coronary disease, and most patients tolerate it well. The main drawback is ankle swelling, but in many cases, that can be managed. Because of this balance, amlodipine shows up more often on senior prescription lists. Metoprolol is used more selectively. It comes into play when a senior has a clear heart condition, like a prior heart attack, chronic heart failure, or arrhythmias. In these cases, slowing the heart and reducing oxygen demand is a direct advantage. But when the only issue is high blood pressure, doctors often avoid starting with metoprolol since fatigue and slow pulse can weigh heavily in daily life. Here's the key difference. Amlodipine is more common as a first-line drug for high blood pressure in seniors. Metoprolol is more common as a second-line drug, when the heart itself needs extra protection. So if you ask which is safer, the real answer depends on the patient's overall health. Neither is wrong. It's about finding the right fit. And that brings us to the final step. We've compared effectiveness, side effects, serious risks, interactions, and guidelines. Now it's time to put it all together to see how doctors weigh amlodipine against metoprolol when treating seniors. So how do these two medicines compare in seniors? Think of amlodipine as an artery medicine. It relaxes the vessels, lowers systolic pressure, and cuts the risk of stroke and heart attack. That's why it's often the first choice for seniors with high blood pressure. Now think of metoprolol as a heart medicine. It slows the heartbeat, eases the strain, and protects after a heart attack, in heart failure, or with rhythm problems. It's not usually first choice for plain hypertension, but when the heart itself needs protection, it becomes essential. 
Both can cause dizziness. Both can add to fall risk. But in different ways. Amlodipine through swelling and lightheadedness. Metoprolol through fatigue and a slow pulse. Here's the takeaway. Amlodipine is more common as the first prescription. Metoprolol is added when the heart needs extra protection. Neither drug is automatically safer. The best choice depends on health, history, and tolerance. And in every case, regular follow-up is what keeps treatment safe. Before we close, one reminder. This video is for education only. Never change your medication without speaking to your doctor. If you found this useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Med Dose Explained, and stay with us, because in our next video, we'll cover foods to avoid with amlodipine, and it connects directly to what we've discussed today.